Well, welcome back. So today I'm going to follow up on the video I did last time, which was discussing the Matic H743 Slim V1 uh, on my beta. And uh, this time we're going to look at the Matic H743 Slim V3. So let me switch over to the other camera. Okay. And uh, here you can see the two boards side by side. They look identical. And uh, uh, from, to all intents and purposes, they are identical apart from the IMUs. Uh, so this is the V1. And you can see just on the end here under the SD card is the trusty old MPU 6000. And then next to it, the ICM20602. If you look on the V3, you'll see two smaller chips. And these are the much newer uh, sensors from InventSense. So the primary IMU is the ICM42688P, I think. I want to say, I'm not sure what the P stands for, but 42688. And then the other is the ICM42605. And uh, both of these are pretty good, but the ICM42688 is really excellent. Uh, and um, there's some changes I've made recently in Arducopter that uh, kind of allow you to take uh, uh, full um, full advantage of, of, uh, of this ICM, of this IMU. So I don't know whether you remember last time with this one, with the V1, I described how one of the problems with the MPU 6000 is it's very sensitive to uh, temperature variations. Uh, it's supposed to be quotes low noise, but I, I have, it, and it is lower noise than the 20602. The 20602 is hot, incredibly noisy and just useless for pretty much anything. MPU 6000 works pretty well, lower noise, but it's very sensitive to temperature uh, variations, so much so that it's actually impossible to tune that out using RGPilot's temperature cal capability. You can do it a bit, but not, not fully. Uh, and the other thing is, the other problem with this IMU is that the uh, accelerometer is really, really bad. Like just old and not very sensitive and all the rest of it. So uh, these two new IMUs have great accelerometers and are much less sensitive to temperature variation. So they've got uh, they're sort of in the data sheet that their the temperature uh, variation is spec and it's much lower the MPU 6000 um, and uh, they're also pretty low noise so we've sort of we've, we've experimented a little bit with these sensors um, uh, and uh, got some settings that we're uh, we're comfortable with and I'll describe those um, in a little bit, but let's first look at some graphs of this thing flying. I mean, you'll see the form factor is basically the same. Same board, uh, uh, top side is uh, free, so it's got all the advantages of the V1, but it's just got these two different um, uh, IMUs here. So let's uh, switch back to the other screen, look at some graphs. All right, audio, so. Okay, so here I have a graph. Let's uh, enable this guy. This is a flight I did on this board uh, using my beta, which is this guy. So this is a, a Marmot, uh, Armat and Marmot five inch frame. It's got some nice T motor motors on it. Um, I'm using Tracer. Uh, 69 for RX and then there's a run cam racer um, camera and a Matec GPS puck which uh, all drones should have. Okay so let's have a look at these graphs. So let's first look at the first gyro. So this is pre-filter. This is post-filter. So this is the 42688. So uh, I think a couple of things to notice. So one is um, it's 
pretty low noise. So you can see pre-filter here. Uh, the the noise is hovering around zeros, log scale. Um, I mean, zero would be too much noise to fly, but of course we do software filtering after after this. But even so, you can see that the amount of noise before we apply any filtering is pretty good. You can see this peak here, which is um, the uh, prop, uh, the RPM motor peak, and then that's replicated on the third harmonic around here. Uh, and uh, the other thing to notice is this. So this too, like the BMI um, 270, has a hardware notch filter, which is designed to take out the resonant peak of the resonant frequency of the sensor itself. So this is uh, this is where they determine that is, and we've set up the filter settings to use the factory defaults for this resonant peak. So uh, we're not going to um, uh, we're not going to say that TDK is wrong. Uh, we'll take it for granted. So a uh, couple more things to notice about this uh, sensor. So you'll see that uh, in the graph here, um, my scale goes up to two kilohertz, which means my sample rate is four kilohertz. So you can only do an FFT on half your sample, up to half your sample rate. So I'm running gyros at four kilohertz on this sensor. And with an H743, which of course the Matec H743 Slim is, uh, there's plenty of CPU to allow you to run at these much faster um, uh, uh, gyro rates. And the advantage of running at the higher gyro rates is that the delay through the filters is lower. Um, so uh, it basically means you sort of get better response and better, theory, better tuning from, from the craft. The other advantage of having um, this higher sample rate is that it means that we can precisely filter frequencies up to two kilohertz. And since most of the interesting noise is up and around sort of 250 and 750, two kilohertz is plenty. Uh, but you can see if if we were if we were running the IMUs at two kilohertz, and so we're only able to filter to one kilohertz, you can see that some of the more interesting um, noise is, is around that mark and what happens if 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 your noise sort of goes above your above your Nyquist frequency is that it folds into lower frequencies so you get this af aliasing effect uh, uh, and uh, so having having uh, um, the sample rate up at two kilohertz means that we can precisely filter all the things that we we want to look at uh, and I've got this slightly wrong here, so gyro 1 is pre-filtering of the second gyro, so here's the post-filter of the first gyro, gyro 2. Um, and uh, so one of the things you can see is I've got a, a static notch here, which is replicated as a static notch, and then it's on the third harmonic. But also the filter um, profile is just a very smooth roll off. So there's no sign of the RPM noise anywhere. And there's sort of none of this mess or a little bit of mess here, but, but uh, it's better than the, uh, the other IMU that we're looking at. The other thing, interesting thing is that the noise on your is very much less than noise on roll and pitch, which is kind of what you'd expect because um, the copter is uh, producing a lot of noise in the in the X and Y sorry X and Y axes, uh, and so that translates uh, into noise that you see here, but not producing a lot of movement because the the motors are pushing up and down in the Y axis. So this this is why we'd expect your noise to be lower, and 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 it is. Uh, so uh, a final thing to notice about this IMU is that uh, although we're running the the uh, output data rate, the IMU frequency at four kilohertz, 
the back end data rate, the hardware sampling rate that is being used is actually 32 kilohertz. So, uh, and this sensor always runs at 32 kilohertz back end rate. So, in the Argicopter code, we don't see that rate other than to sort of configure the filters. And the great thing about that is that these hardware filters are applied at the back end rate. So, we can get really, really good anti aliasing. Um, without sort of with minimal sort of sort of software cost or delay by using leveraging these hardware filters uh, at the 32 kilohertz backend rate so this is a really really nice thing about um, these particular sensors I mean the MPU 6000 backend rate only goes up to 8, 8 kilohertz so these go a lot higher and you can apply these hardware anti-aliasing filters and the notch filter in fact um, uh, Although I'm just recalling, I think maybe in the data sheet the notch filter itself is after. So this may actually be at the, the regular sample rate, but the anti aliasing filter is definitely at 32 kilohertz. So, um, all in all, a great way of reducing noise uh, on these IMUs, and it's so great that uh, Matek have put this uh, on this board. So then if I look at the other IMU, so here's pre-filter, here's post-filter. So you can see similar but not the same, which is interesting. So I think a couple of things to notice. One is that the, the hardware notch filters are in different places on uh, um, on this one, this is the ICM 42605. So I'm not, I have no idea why they would do that, but uh, this is this is down to the settings, the factory default settings, and so I assume that's correct for the sensor. And then also there's this big spike of noise at uh, 100 sort of 1250 hertz, and I have no idea what that is. I can't believe that that's noise from the craft itself I think that might be something else something to do with the sensor so uh, yeah not not that clear and you can see it's a it's probably a bit more noisy than the other one and a bit sort of broader spread of noise over the other one um, so not as good and you, that's sort of reflected in the filtering uh, you can see that the, the drop-off is not quite so steep there's a bit more noise and a bit more stuff going going on here um, and uh, the filtering settings are available. There are fewer filtering settings available on the 42605. It's still pretty good, but there are fewer settings available. Still can run at uh, 4 kilohertz output data rate, so we can get sort of 2 kilohertz FFTs and filtering in ArduPilot. Um, so still pretty good. And I've I flew the copter with trying both IMUs as the primary IMU and uh, it flew very well on both so I, I think the 4605 is not not a bad IMU by any means but not as good as the 4, 42688. Uh, I think it also has 32 kilohertz back-end data rate but just slightly slightly fewer filtering options. Uh, so uh, uh, another nice thing about these sensors is that so these sensors typically um, run on the SPI, Serial Peripheral Interface Bus, on the STM32 chips, and uh, on um, many of these old, with many of these older sensors, that bus is run at quite a low rate. Uh, so I think on the Matek board there, I think the MPU6000 is run at four megahertz. And I think that's because the chip itself is only rated up to 8 megahertz, I want to say. Whereas these newer sensors are rated up to 24 megahertz, so much, much higher. Now, we can't get SBI to go that fast. There are some other limitations in terms of the clock tree on STM32 that we've set up in ArduPilot, but we can still go significantly higher to, I think I got this up to about 12 megahertz something like that so these are these are configured for 12 megahertz now if you get the latest version of the code so three times faster than the MPU 6000 and the advantage of that is that the 
our SPR transactions are shorter and therefore we're consuming less, um, uh, we're potentially consuming less CPU time and get sort of more accurate, accurate timing. Uh, so um, yeah, so all in all these sensors are great sensors and uh, I, you know this board is, is great. I, I would say so far this is the best flying I've had, had on, on this copter with this V3 board. So very, very happy, uh, happy with that, that board. Um, and uh, I think to, to take advantage of some of this configuration, it's probably worth looking at my um, other, uh, other videos. So uh, that is the end of this sort of whistle-stop tour of the Matek H743 Slim V3. It has the same features as the other Matek board, so H743 chip, two megabytes of flash, one megabyte of RAM, uh, BM, sort of DSP310 maybe, uh, uh, Barrow, I, I, f I forget which Barrow it, it is, they're, they're sort of much for muchness a little bit, but, um, uh, and, but these new IMUs that are, are really, really great. Uh, so uh, next, next time I do a review uh, of these boards, I'm going to go for the Kakut H7 V2, which is a refresh of the H7, um, and that has yet another sensor, which is the BMI 270. So uh, 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 hopefully, do a good review of, of, of that next time. Thanks for watching.